So this one's about how I caught my first case and ended up going to the New York State prison system. What was I thinking? Alrighty, welcome back to another episode of Grow With Me Sawyer P where we grow together, not apart. And it's been almost two weeks since I've uploaded a video and I apologize y'all, it's just been um, a busy past little bit. Um, I met someone new, um, talking to, um, a girl I'm dating and just kind of been busy with that. So I definitely need to get back on track with these videos because I've been getting comments of people saying I need to start uploading more and things of that nature. So here I am. And before I begin, I just want to say thank you all for, you know, I'm almost at 100 subs, uh, subscribers, which I really, really appreciate that, the support, and i um, hoping to continue to grow and grow and grow, and the next goal, I guess, will be 500 and then 1,000, you know, oh, I can't wait to get that first 1,000, so, um, yeah, I just wanted to show some gratitude and just say, if y'all do enjoy these videos, I'm obviously aspiring to, you know, be a uh, content creator and, and um, Put out good content there are cars driving by but hopefully that doesn't affect the audio there's a little bit of wind out here but hopefully that doesn't affect things too much in this video but if y'all do enjoy these videos please subscribe please like uh, comment share um, anything of that nature is going to um, help the al algorithm suggest my video to other people and help me grow and um, that means the world to me you know i do want this uh, my message to get out because not only is it therapeutic for me to just tell these stories and get these things off my chest, but pe other people that have been through similar things, I want them to know that they can change their life. They can come back from going through really hard things, be it addiction, due to time, um, whatever it may be. You know, For me, it's always been addiction. It's been my struggle with uh, mostly opioids and cocaine and things of that nature. But if you, if you like it, just show a little support, and I will continue to pump these out for y'all and uh, try to get y'all some interesting stuff so all right so this is it this is this this story will be about how i caught my first felony which ultimately landed me time in prison where i served a one to three year prison sentence and uh, all right so we'll just go back we'll re rewind the clock back to the year of 2006 the time I was 17 years old. This is the month of January 2006. This actually happened on January 5th. But before I tell you what exactly happened, I need to give you a little back information. So, um, at the time, you know, I, this is back when like Oxycontin, Hydrocodone, Percocets um, were really big. Now the drug game is a lot more fentanyl in the opioid scene and heroin and stuff like that. There still are pills, don't get me wrong, but. At that time, pills were huge, huge, like oxys and, and hydrocodone and perks were probably like the three biggest, but there were other ones too, you know, uh, uh, morphine, suboxone, things of that nature, you know, that people like to use. And so at that time, you know, I was, my habit was starting to pick up, you know, I, I started off as a teen, you know, the first time I ever used drugs, I was like 13 and I smoked weed. And how ten, addiction tends to be, they call it a progressive disease or progressive uh, disorder, you know, whatever you want to call it. Some people don't think it's a disease. I definitely think it's at minimum. It's not a disease, it's at minimum a disorder of the brain, you know, <clears throat> that makes people go back to it, even though they know it destroys their life, you know. But, um, you know, it started off with pot, um, experimenting, trying mushrooms, the cocaine, um, special K. Uh, try to, you know, I, I told myself at one point it was a goal to try every drug. Like, at least once, you know. I wanted to try everything. I've tried Adderall. And ultimately, over time, the drug that gave me the best feeling that I liked, that made me feel good and, and confident, you know. I feel like a lot of my issues for, from addiction stemmed from a lack of, you know, very low self-esteem. And from childhood traumas that, you know, made, you know, caused a lot of depression and, like, PTSD and things of that nature. That's where, you know, addiction tends to stem from uh, a few different factors, and it can be trauma, it can be low self-esteem, it can be from loneliness, um, 
you know, things of that nature. And uh, for me as a teen, it was definitely very low self-esteem, low confidence, and, you know, enduring things like family tr traumas and stuff like that, you know, uh, parents splitting up, and, um, you know, having an addict for dad, things of that nature. But so anyways, so at that point, I started progressing more and more into these pills, taking you know, large amounts of hydrocodone or snorting Oxycontin, things of that nature. And there was a woman in our town, oh, I think her name was Michelle. I can't remember her last name. It was actually a friend of mine's aunt. And she actually got a prescription, like I think she got like two or three scripts. Like back then, people used to doctor shop. Like you'd go to one doctor and get a script and then go to a different doctor and get a script. You know, and they called it doctor shopping. And I think this is, her husband was a veteran. And they were actually, I believe his, I think he got a script and she got a script. He was a veteran, I think he was in the Army or a Marine or something like that. And he got he got hurt at some point and he got started getting high, uh, hydrocodones. I think they were the blue Watson 10 milligrams. The blue Watson, um, they usually had those, but you know. Anyways, they, um, they, they sold these pills. You know, back then, a 10 milligram hydrocodone went for about $3 a piece on average. If, you know, sometimes you would get them for two fifty, but the average was right anywhere from two fifty to four dollars. You know what I mean? But for the average for me, it was around three dollars. You get like three for ten. For ten bucks, you get three pills. You know. But anyways, this woman she had sold to people, and there were a few people in my town. I grew up in Alcott, New York. This is right on um, Lake Ontario near Lockport, New York, not too far from Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And um, this woman, she sold pills to a few of my friends that I grew up with. And um, I knew who she was in past. Like, you know, she'd probably see me walking down the street. And, you know, I'd seen her out working and, like, doing her, her gardening work and stuff. Like, she knew who I was by face. And in passing, she probably knew who my name was. But we didn't know each other, like, well, you know. So... Obviously, if someone doesn't know you, they're not going to feel comfortable selling drugs to you, you know what I mean? And, you know, someone's got to be able to trust you in order to sell drugs to you, so we didn't have that kind of relationship. But like I said, she didn't know who I was just by through passing and seeing me around. Probably heard my name before, stuff like that. So, And there was a girl across the street at that time that I kind of would mess around with sometimes, like, you know, have a little fling, whatever, with. And it was literally directly across the street from this woman. So she seen me over there hanging out with her sometimes and stuff. And I think that girl introduced me to her one time. But, you know, it was just like, hey, this is Sawyer. And boom, you know, that was it. There was no, like, extensive conversation. So, <clears throat> so I knew she sold these pills. And I, I, um, wanted in, you know, and I, I mean, if, I didn't know how to go about, I mean, I couldn't just go ask her, hey, we some, you know what I mean? You got to get like a proper introduction to do that. And the conversation's got to come up and whatnot, you know? And I think she was trying to be very low key about it. There was like only two people she would sell to. And um, so I, I figured in my mind, so my reasoning at the time was, hey, I want these pills. And sometimes, you know, there's moments where there's a lot of stuff around, like drugs wise, and there's times where it's, there's like more of a, um, uh, what do you call it, like a, a drought, you know, it's harder to find stuff. And I think at this time it was kind of hard, there wasn't a lot around, like there was stuff, but it was kind of harder to get stuff for that particular few days of the month. Because sometimes you got to wait till people get their script refilled from the doctor, you know, and there might be a few days right before they get their script filled that they're out or whatever, or they'll jack up the prices, you know. People will jack up the prices because there's not much around, stuff like that. But anyways, <clears throat> so... I'd been pondering on it. I'd been pondering, pondering if I should do this or not, but I told myself, oh, I'm gonna sit here for a second. Should I, should I um, rob this lady? You know, should I steal these bills? She won't sell to me. So should I just go take them? You know? And I pondered, pondered, and at this point I had done a few burglaries and stuff like that, and stole, you know, and then, you know, I'm not proud of it. I'm not trying to glorify, please. That's one thing I wanna say, do not take this, video is glorification by any means because it's not it's, uh, not cool you know at all but mind you like I said I was 17 and one day I just decided I'm gonna you know I think I was at school I went to school that day and during school I'm like when I get home I'm gonna I'm gonna try to you know see if I can get in her house and get them you know 
So later on that day, I go to school, I come home. This is probably around like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This lady lived right on the beach. Her house was literally a beachfront property um, on Lake Ontario in Alcott. And I kind of snuck down on the beach and kind of like army crawled up the hill. So I, I did, at this point I committed. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking into this lady's house and I'm taking her stuff. Because I was told she had like a hundred, like two or three bottles of 180 pills, which that's a good bit. You know what I mean? I think she got like her, I think she got a script and her husband got like two scripts, if I remember right. It was something like that. They definitely got at least one each of like 180 of them. And I think they got like Valium or Xanax as well too, which I didn't care for those too much, but I knew I could get rid of them, you know? So, okay, anyways, I sneak down there to the beach. Like I said, she lives on the beach. And I go down to like the sand part and there's like steps to go up to her house. I kind of sneak halfway up them because it's like a hill that goes down to the beach, a grassy hill. And there are some cement steps that go down to it from her back door. I snuck halfway up them and then I army crawled and like she had a screened in like back porch that looked out on the lake. They probably sit back there and look at the water and stuff. I kind of peek through there. I peek through a few windows to make sure it's, um, to make sure it's, um, like, quiet, you know what I mean? Like, it looks like no one's home. I'm trying to make sure no one's home, you know? It's dead silent. There's not a single sound to be heard. There's no lights on. And the car that was in, you know, the car, they only had one vehicle. I remember making note of that because I, I was like, I got to do this when they're not home, you know? And that's the first thing I observed when I walked down there from my house, which was like a few blocks away, you know? And I noticed the vehicle was gone. And I, so I snuck down there. I snuck up the hill. I started peeking around, peeking through a few different windows. And they have a garage that you enter through and you can knock on a door. Like you could tell their main door, you had to go through this garage, which was unlocked, a door. And then once you go through there, there's another door that you open to get into the house. And at that point, you're, in, you're out of the garage and into the house, you know. <coughs> so the garage door was unlocked. I go in, there's no car in the carport in there on the inside, like, you know, there's outside parking space, like gravel, and then there's that garage, which I think had a door that opened and lowered. That was empty too, there's no car in there. So I'm like, oh, these people aren't home, they're gone at work, or they're out doing something. And I actually knocked on the door, like, not super loud, but, you know, I felt loud enough to see if, and if, you know, someone answered, I was just gonna be like, oh, I, uh, I had a plan, like, that girl that lived across the street, I was just going to be like, oh, I was told Summer was over here. I was just seeing if she was, I was going to make something up, you know, like if she did answer. I thought she was over here. I was just checking to see if she was here because, you know, someone told me she was over here. I think that's what I had planned in my mind if someone did answer the door. And then she could be like, no. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. My bad. And no big deal, you know. They probably wouldn't have thought anything of it. So I knock. I wait. I don't hear anything. I don't hear any footsteps. No one's moving around. I knock one more time just to make sure. I don't hear nothing, not a peep to be heard. Nobody came out. But anyways, so at this point, that door was locked. The door to the house. And I didn't want to damage, I don't want to kick the door in, because that's going to be loud. I don't want to break nothing. Um, you know, I wanted to be as absolutely discreet as possible about this. So I took a, I had like some kind of a card. I think I had a student ID card in my wallet. I had my wallet on me. Like, you know, you get a student ID of the high school you go to. I think I used that. And I shimmied it into, like, you know, you can use, you may, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but you can use cards sometimes to shimmy locks and get in. And I, I kind of knew, I, I'd seen it done before. I didn't, I don't think I'd ever practiced it at that point in my life. But I slid it in and it pushed that little latch. Like, it gets in between the latch and the hole and it unlocks the door. And I, it worked. Somehow it popped and I pulled it. You know, it like got in between the little latch and the hole that the latch slides into, and you know, separated those two. And I was able to open the door, and boom. So I walk in. It's dark in there. It's quiet. Can't hear noise. Nothing. You know, it seems like no one is home at all. And the girl Summer, like she went over there to hang out with this lady a few times, and like I think ate dinner with her. You know, like she was not the girl Summer is the girl across the street. I kind of had the fling thing with once in a while you want to call it a fling or I just hung out with her whatever you know and so she had told me she had seen her going into her, her medication before in a closet as soon as you walk in there's like a kind of like a coat closet and there's lots of like there's like a shelf 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 and like maybe so like a box in the bottom of it and it's very narrow it's a very narrow closet not wide at all you know 
So I'm, I'm, I open that door immediately and I just see like, I mean, so many different prescriptions. There's probably like, oh, I don't know, at least like 20 different pill bottles. And some were like high blood pressure, depression medication, you know, a variety of things. So I'm looking through and I'm like turning, you know, probably what, or what I, you know, this is horrible. I'm not trying to say you should ever do this, but as a thief, the better option would have been just like sweep it all in a bag and leave, you know, like just take off and, and go. But I'm like sitting there, I'm looking at, I'm like turning them, because some of them are facing away, like the label. It's like, okay, this isn't the right one. This is the right one. I found the bottle of Van Xanax, and I'm looking through legs, and there's so many of them. And right as I'm in the middle of doing that, I found the Xanax, and those on the side. <clears throat> right as I'm in the middle of doing that, I, uh, I hear some movement. I hear, like, it's not like someone put their feet on the floor, like they got off the bed and put their feet on the floor. And I hear, like, a few footsteps, and I'm like, oh, my God. So before this closet, this closet door is on the right hand side. Once you come in, the bedroom door is the first door once you walk in. And then the second door is that closet. So when I heard that, there was a room right across the hall. It was like, I seemed like a spare bedroom. There was a hard, there might've been like a bed in it and like a few things in there. It seemed like a spare room, honestly. I, when I heard those noises, I, I, Stop what I was doing, I closed the door super quietly, and I went in there really fast, and I, I should have just bolted out the door. Like, looking back, I should have just took, just doo, jetted out the front door, you know? Even though I might have had to cross paths, like, you know, she was moving quick, I could tell she was walking, flat. like, once I heard the footsteps, I could tell she was coming to her room, door to her room very quickly, and I was like, oh my god, so I quickly just did that, and I went in that room, and I hid behind the door. Like, you know how you can pull a door, like, this wall here? You can pull the door up close to you and stand behind it. I did that and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm freaking, my heart's beating a mile a minute, you know. I'm freaking out, I'm panicking, I'm panicking. And all of a sudden I hear a, who the fuck's in my house? And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't say nothing. Who's in my house? And you know, she sounds very angry, very upset. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, what if she's got a gun? What if she's got a knife, whatever, you know, because I mean, hey, you, <laughs> someone's in your house, you might have grab your gun, you know? I wouldn't, I mean, I would consider grabbing mine if I had one, you know? And she goes straight to that room, and, like, she pulls on the handle to pull it away from me, and I'm, like, holding on to it. <laughs> like, looking back, it's so stupid, it's embarrassing. Like, this is an embarrassing story, I'm just gonna be honest. Mind you, I was 17, and I, you know, like, I'll just finish. She starts pulling the handle, and I'm pulling it back. Pull, 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 I'm, uh, you know, and China, I just let it go, I, I knew I was caught, you know, and she's like, Sawyer, what are you doing in my house, what are you, da, 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 da. what are you doing in here, flipping out, uh, no one said you could fucking be in here, da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, I just, I remember what I said, I tried to come up with an excuse, I'm like, oh, Summer told me she was over here and I could just come in, like, she said, just walk in, you know, and I came in, I didn't see anyone, she's like, no, I heard you in my closet rattling around, blah, 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 freaking out, you know, because like I said, she knew who I was in passing, and she knew my name, and I'd been introduced to her, but she didn't know me well, you know? And, like, later on, I told people this story, like, other people I was in, had been in jail with and stuff, like, the story, and they're like, dude, you should have just punched her in the face and ran, you know? I'm like, dude, if I would have punched her in the face and ran, or, like, attacked her in any way, it would have went from, I got charged, so I ended up, you know, I ended up getting caught for this, obviously. Instead of being charged with second degree burglary, I would have got charged with first degree burglary, like home invasion, because I would, you know, I attacked her, you know what I mean? And I probably would have got some very serious time, you know, like, I ended up doing a one to three on this. I probably would end up doing like seven or eight years, maybe ten, you know, if I would have put my hands on her, you know? And, um, you know, it was stupid. Like I said, I should, you know, hindsight's 20 20. In those moments, you kind of panic or whatever. You don't think you can get caught, and then it happens, and it's like, oh my god, you know. But, um, you know, she's like, no, I'm, I'm calling the cops, so I'm calling the cops. I'm like, please, you know, and at that point, I'm like, please don't call the cops, please. Like, like I said, this is an embarrassing story. Like, it's not like this gangster, like, tough guy story. It's very embarrassing, you know. And I'm like, please, like, I'll give you money. Like, I won't ever come down here again. You won't ever see me again down here, ever, you know. She's like, nope, 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 wait right there, wait right there. And I'm like, stupid me, I waited, you know, but I knew I was caught. You know, I knew I was caught, like, I could have walked, like, ran back to my house, but the cops would have just came to my house, you know what I mean? And, and 
kicked in the door at my mom's house, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I knew, like, what, what am I options? I could stand here and try to explain to the police what I was doing, which I tried to use the same excuse, which they weren't, you know, they weren't buying it. And uh, we just waited, and the cop showed up, he slams me against the car, throws cuffs on me, takes, you know, takes me to the courthouse, the town court, I get arraigned, which the, the, the judge knew my mom, like, and she knew my mom because my mom was like a summer recreation director for the school, and the judge was like connected to the school in some way or somehow, and uh, she like gave me a $250 bail, you know, so I posted a bail, like, I always sat in the holding tank, the holding cell for like an hour, hour and a half, something like that. My mom came straight up and got me out, you know. The judge let me call from the courthouse and let him know I was going to jail. Plus, I looked so young. I was like, had such a baby face then. She probably felt bad, like, this kid's so stupid. She didn't really want to lock me up. But, you know, I, I had to be locked up. So, that's what happens, you know. I end up bailing out and... After that, I end up signing up for drug court. I get felony, pro you know, I get indicted. It goes to county court, Niagara County Court. I get indicted. I get felony probation and drug court. And that was a whole story of, you know, I'll separate that story, you know, and tell you some stuff about that. But I've been through, like, detoxes, um, a nine-month, um, like, youth adolescent rehab program in Rochester, New York. Um, like, a six-month one in Buffalo called Renaissance House. Um, you know, a hospital 28 day program, I had like two different halfway houses, detoxes. Eventually though, I did get kicked out of drug court. I went on the run. I like, I ran down here to Alabama for 10 months, but I came back. And when I came back, you know, like I, like I said, I'm just condensing what happens. And I, cause that's a whole long story in itself, you know, going through all those treatment programs. They said, like, as a condition of my drug court, if I sign up for drug court, I have to go to inpatient. Like, I have to. Like, some people can go to outpatient, but they thought I, my addiction was too serious and I needed inpatient when they did my assessment. So, um, I got, you know, that was a, a mandatory thing, but I'd rather go to inpatient than be in jail or prison, you know what I mean? So, I did it. I didn't want to go. And uh, but ultimately, like, you know, I was always getting kicked out of treatment programs and stuff like that and, and getting in trouble while I was in these rehabs and stuff. And uh, ultimately went on the run, came down here, and it's when I came back. I stayed with my grandma for like 10 months and was wilding out here down here. And it was just, I, you know, it was too bad. I was just, my grandma was too old to be dealing with me at that time doing that. So I came back up to New York and I got caught. Someone told somebody, uh, the cops I was at a friend's house and they like ran up in his house and pulled me out and everything. But um, that's how I got the one to three. Once they got me, once I came back from being on the run, um, they took me to county court, gave me no bail, and then said scheduled sentencing for my probation violation, hearing my felony probation for like a month later or something like that. And that's where I got my one to three, you know. So, um, like I said, the story is embarrassing. I did two state bids in New York. It was for that uh, second degree uh, burglary of a dwelling, which got dropped down to like third degree attempted um, burglary of a dwelling, which is a class E felony. It went from a C felony to a class E nonviolent, a C violent to an E nonviolent. And, you know, I went to Oneida and all that stuff, Oneida Correctional Facility. But um, I guess the takeaway from the story is, you know, a lot of the time you think you can do drugs and it will never control you. Like, oh, drugs can't control me. It's just some little powder. It's just some little bud of weed or a little line of coke or one pill. How could this control me? Even if you are a very strong-willed person, strong, determined, you got a strong personality type, that stuff changes your brain chemistry and your body and your hormones and in your synapses and um, neurotransmitters in your brain and it rewires you, you know? And I don't care how strong you are, it can happen to you. And when you become dependent on a drug, you do things you would never ever consider doing if you weren't doing drugs, you know. Um, and, and everyone knows that. Some people prostitute, some people steal, some people rob their own family, people do violent crimes and like, you know, do stick-ups with guns and all kinds of stuff, horrible stuff, rob banks. You know, and um, don't ever think that, that you're, you can't, it can't happen to you or someone you know and love because it absolutely can. Um, it, will, it consumes your soul it, and you have to have it, especially a drug like an opiate or a benzo or alcohol. 
those particular three, the, the opioid withdrawal, or excuse me, the withdrawals from them are severe. And you get sick, you can't function, you can't even get out of bed without it. And in some instances, opioids is kind of rare. You can die from opioid withdrawal, but it's rare. Um, it's most of the times people coming off like heroin or fentanyl in jail, and they're not they're getting dehydrated. They're not giving them fluids and stuff like that, or like an IV. But uh, benzos and alcohol, you can die from seizures. Like you get when you go through withdrawals, they get seizures. But anyways, you know, don't think it can't ever happen to you. And this isn't to glorify it. I felt like a fool from it. It was embarrassing. But um, I learned a lot from it, you know. And at that point, I, it, it wasn't enough, that one to three, to make me stop. I still had to screw up a little more before I finally got it together. But, um, you know, that that's where the beginning of me doing time started. And uh, before that, I was just kind of like a pothead, pillhead, you know, hung out with friends and walk around town and while, you know, we do all play hacky sack and go on adventures and go to parties and all that and that's when everything changed and I got introduced to AA and the, the judicial pro, uh, justice system and all that stuff. But, um, you know, it was my second bit is where the changes really started to happen, you know, and I started working on myself and maturing and looking at life from a different perspective, you know. <clears throat> But um, <clears throat> that's how it went down. I wanted to give you all a little back history on who I am so you all could understand how I first started <clears throat> getting in trouble. And, I, and, you know, my crime started getting kind of more intense as time went on. That seems a little more innocent, you know. But that's how it began, you know. I just want to give you all understand how it began, you know. And, um, but, you know, you live and you learn. And or I can't take it back, unfortunately. I wish I could, you know, but it's just, it is what it is. And I learned a lot from it, but... Um, maybe if you're young and you're thinking about going down that path, uh, think twice if you're young and you're watching this, because now it's, you know, I work for myself, I own my own business, but if I ever wanted to get a job or an apartment, things like that, it can be hard to get when you got felonies. A lot of people won't hire you. Um, a lot of people won't rent to you. There's so many different things, you know, um, and yeah, there's so many different things and, um, you gotta, you know, that changes your life, you know, so you can't, it's best to be a good person, have, have good habits, um, have good association with people, be positive, productive, you know, get into some type of faith, uh, whatever works for you, just try to be a good person, you know what I mean, but um, I always wanted to just give something for y'all to take away from a, at the end of the video, some positive, you know. Because there's no glory in living that lifestyle. You know, there's none whatsoever. But um, I hope this video has gave you a little information about, you know, my background. And like I said, it is a little embarrassing, but it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. And um, I will catch you all in the next video. And I'm going to try to get back on the horse here and post at least three or four videos a week minimum. And uh, I just want you all to know I love you. And... Um, Keep watching Grow With Me, Sawyer P, where we grow together and not apart. And like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. I appreciate you guys so much and hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Welcome.